If I was to ask you, what do CEOs view as the most crucial factor for business success, what would you say? Some of you might think business rigor, perhaps vision, maybe even manager discipline, but you'd be mistaken. According to a study by IBM, the number one factor identified for business success, believe it or not, is creativity. But we have a problem. These leaders say that creativity is core to business success. However, they're unknowingly choking it out of the business environment. So how do we bridge this gap? As a design leader in Silicon Valley for a dozen years, I've been spending some time thinking about this problem. And I believe we have a fundamental misunderstanding of creativity. We need to start by rejecting the notion that creativity belongs to a select few, that it's owned by the creative right brain thinkers, the painters, the playwrights, the poets, and that it's unavailable to the more logical left brain thinkers, the mathematicians, computer scientists, engineers. I'm here to tell you today, we all have the capacity for creative thinking. In fact, creativity is a birthright available to all, but used by few. Once we come to accept and acknowledge the fact that we can all be creative thinkers, we can focus on its development. So how do we ignite creativity? The answer is in our past. Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. I'd like to invite you all to take a moment, step back to your childhood. We questioned the world. We were curious about everything. And we were naturally observant. Did you know the average preschooler asked 100 questions a day? We can draw a lot of inspiration about creativity from our childhood. It starts by opening our minds, looking for new possibilities, and challenging the status quo. Just like parents foster creativity in their children, we must do the same in the workplace. So how do we change? I'd like to share three strategies, three strategies I believe everyone in this room can use to bring creativity to their workplace. Let's start by talking about environments. Environments are the foundation for creative thinking. If you look at most business environments today, this is what they look like. Not very inspiring. Boring, bland, rows of cubes, equally boring and uninspiring meeting rooms. And the tools that we use, generic computers, line notebooks, black pens. One of the core aspects of creative thinking is ideation exploring a variety of ideas, collaborating. And these kinds of spaces and tools just don't foster that behavior. But think back to your childhood. These are the kinds of spaces you worked and played in. A variety of different locations for different kinds of activities. Bold, bright, colorful, energetic. And the tools we used? Blank paper colored pencils, pens, paint, markers, everything we needed for imagination and creation. The good news, companies are catching on and they're recognizing the importance of the environment. Microsoft, Google, Lego, just to name a few, are investing in spaces like these. They're getting the importance of creating a variety of spaces for employees. At Citrix, where I work, we opened a design collaboration space inspired by the design school at Stanford. It's 2,000 square feet of wide open space filled with whiteboards, tables, stools. It's easily configurable, so you can create any kind of unique working environment. Creative supplies are everywhere at your fingertips. The room is available at all times, designed for spontaneous collaboration. A radical change happened when we opened this space. It was pretty incredible. Instead of preaching about the merits of collaboration and ideation, we started seeing it happen real time every day. 
And even better, employees are telling us they love this new way of working, and they are coming up with better ideas that are impacting our products. Environment is the foundation for creative thinking. A second way that we can all ignite creativity in our workplace is through experiments. But the problem we have is we are so laser focused on execution, on process, on efficiency, that we're missing the opportunity for innovation. We create cultures where we are afraid to fail. And as a result, we do the same thing again and again and again because it's what we know and it feels safe. But we aren't able to innovate by repeating the same thing. We get trapped in this cycle of micro-improvements, of incrementalism, and missing out on that great opportunity for creative innovation. Go back to your childhood. There was no one way to build a tower of blocks or to make a fantastic creation from Play-Doh, to build a snowman after a snowfall. And if we failed, it was okay. It was part of the process. We need to bring this mindset back to the workplace. Thomas Edison made a thousand unsuccessful attempts before inventing the light bulb, but he saw this as part of the process. He said the light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. We need to embrace this mindset of experimenting. We need to learn to fail fast and fail early. We need to take our ideas and improve them and iterate them. This is how ideas go from good to spectacular. A really great way to do this is through prototypes. Prototypes are models created cheaply and quickly using everyday items. You can take these prototypes and you can show them to customers. You can explore a broad array of ideas with prototypes. Throw away the ones that don't work and continue to refine the ones that do. It's the best way to experiment and fail fast, fail early. A really famous example of prototyping comes from IDEO, a design agency in Silicon Valley. They used this prototype made from a marker, a film canister, and a clothespin. And they brought it to surgeons. This prototype resonated so well with the surgeons that they were able to come up with a whole host of ideas of how to improve this surgical device and bring it to life. IDEO was able to use this great information and feedback to refine the idea and ultimately generate a real surgical device that tripled the client's revenue in this product space. So although experimenting and prototyping may in some ways seem like child's play, it's actually driving real innovation and business success. A third way that you can all ignite creativity in the workplace is through storytelling. TED is the most fantastic example of storytelling. Spreading ideas through stories that touch people. But in the business environment, we have just lost the art of storytelling. I think we've all sat through this presentation. A stack of cold, boring bullets on a screen, no emotion, no context. What have we done? Stories have the ability to inspire and persuade, like these kinds of presentations never will, like facts, reports, and charts just can't. Rewind to childhood, when we were all natural storytellers. We told stories through role play. We empathized with our characters and captured the hearts, minds, and imagination of our audience. We need to bring this back to the work environment. Stories have a really powerful ability to package information, context, and emotion. There are a few things that I believe make stories really, really successful. First of all, they start with passion and emotion and vision. They're not at all about constraints and timelines. They make your customer the hero, someone that your audience wants to invent for. They're hanging on every word. They want to see that customer succeed. 
And lastly, stories drive conversations. They're not just one-way monologues. They leave the audience wanting more. They want to understand. They want to help bring your idea to life. One of my favorite examples of story-led innovation comes from GE Healthcare. Doug Dietz, an industrial designer, for 20 years decided he was going to go out and see his MRIs being used in the hospital. And he made a really unexpected discovery. The experience of a child receiving an MRI. The child was crying in the hallway, and the father leaned down and said, remember, I told you, you have to be brave. Doug was so moved by this experience that he wanted to learn more. He discovered that many children have to be sedated because this experience of an MRI is so terrifying. This increased risk, cost, and stress on the family and the child. Doug was so determined to solve this problem, he went back to GE Healthcare and told this story. A group of people were so inspired that they wanted to work with him. They wanted to change the ending of this story. And the result is pretty incredible. They developed the Adventure Series of Scanners. This one is actually called the Cozy Camp Experience. And as soon as the child opens the door, they're off on a camping adventure. They snuggle into a sleeping bag, and when they go into the MRI machine, it's now an adventure in a tent. He and his team completely transformed this experience from one of terror, risk, and cost to one of complete joy. Pretty incredible. The good news is lots of companies are getting the importance of stories. These are pictures from my workplace. People are telling stories with their ideas, using prototypes, and bringing them to life. Creativity has the power for invention and ultimate success. Environments, experiments, and storytelling are just a few of the ways that I believe you can inject it into your workplace. But remember, creativity is a birthright. It's available to all, but used by few. So I ask you to embrace, empower, and insist on creativity in your workplace. And watch the ideas unfold. Thank you. <laughs>